Hustling is a mentality. It's a code of conduct. The hustler's mentality is, how can this challenge be my opportunity? And what can I learn? The, the hustler thinks differently. All roads lead back to the mentality. If you're going to win the fight for your future, you're going to have to prepare your mindset for the workload. You can't be afraid to change. You got to beat on your craft every day. I don't have permission to stop. All roads lead back to your mindset, your mentality. The way that you see this thing is going to determine your future. A hustler is committed and consistent. And so this is not a Monday through Friday thing. It's a Monday through Monday thing. Every single day, I'm beating on my craft. Every single day, I'm looking to become more than I was yesterday. I am not in competition with anybody. The hustler says the only person I am competing with is who I used to be yesterday. The hustler says I don't have a second to waste. The hustler does not waste time. Put the hours in. No days off mentality. A lot of people want to lose weight. A lot of people want to see transformation. A lot of people want to see something different. It's like if I don't put the work in, I'm not going to have muscles. And so the hustler knows how to prioritize their time. The hustler knows how to lock in. You got to lock in. Whatever it is that you're setting out to do, it's going to require a different version of yourself. If you're going to manifest in your hands what you see in your head, then you're going to have the courage, the confidence, the self-belief, and the self-determination to go out every single day and make it happen. Every single day somebody's doing something you're not willing to do to secure the future. And so when you go into the day with that mindset, that list will shrink. The list of people that are outworking you, it'll shrink. So you got to dedicate to creative time. You need an army to fulfill destiny. So you got to be connected. You got to grow your network. And all that you do and your failures and your successes, learn from them. Note takers are the money makers. Hustlers take notes. It's difficult to manifest what is not written down. Put me in a room with a hundred people. I'm going to take more notes than them. I'm going to listen better. I'm going to have more fun. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to talk less. And so the movement that we see across the earth from the high achievers, the successful entrepreneurs, those who are launching businesses and organizations, it all starts with their mindset, their mentality. The psychology of a champion is just different. Hustlers are just wired differently. And so the hustler knows how to prioritize their time. The hustler knows how to lock in. You gotta lock in. You have to put the hours in. You may have to raise children, cultivate your marriage, and work your side hustle all at the same time. Everybody knows if you don't go to the gym, if you don't get on the treadmill, put the cardio in, if you don't hit the weights and lift, you're not going to walk around with the physique that you see in your head. It's going to remain a conversation, a vision, a dream. How do you manifest what you see in your head to hold it in your head is that you got to have that hustler's mentality. The hustler is going to outwork everybody in the room. The hustler says, if me and you are on the treadmill, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to get off first or I'm going to die trying to beat you because I'm completely sold out to the dream, the vision that I'm carrying. The difference between game changers and city shakers and the people that just talk about it, the people that just dream about it, have visions about it, fill notebooks about it. The difference between the two, number one is that they are absolutely clear on what it is that they've been called to do and what it is they've been called to build and who it is they've been called to become. Number two, a hustler is committed 
and consistent. The hustler's mindset is that if I'm going to have something, I've got to first become something. And so hustling can't be a weekend thing, right? It can't be, I'm going to do it this Friday. I'm going to do it Monday. Okay, I'm motivated on Monday. It's a government. It's a lifestyle. This is what I do every single day. And I don't have an on and off switch. The first thing on a hustler's radar is not the opportunity, it's the mindset. Because if I get the opportunity with the wrong mindset, I won't maintain the opportunity. I'll lose it. And the hustler understands the power of retention. Okay? So the hustler eliminates distractions. <laughs> the hustler says, I'm beating on my crab. The hustler says, I'm going after it. The hustler says, I can't afford to miss this moment. I can't afford to overlook this critical time, this crucial opportunity. I'm gonna give it everything I have, period. When you've got this hustler's mentality, you're not looking for a handout. You just know you have to outwork everybody in the room. You gotta put the work in after hours. You're not wasting your time being entertained. You're not wasting your time watching TV all day. You're not wasting your time complaining about what you don't have. The hustler has already come to the conclusion that if they don't have something, they have to become. So you got to prepare your mindset for what it is that you're going after. If you have to listen to this a thousand times, understand how hustlers are wired, the psychology of a champion. Just keep moving, keep hustling, keep grinding until you no longer have to introduce yourself. The day can be today that your career is over. Now what do you do? I said, I better get to work. <laughs> Rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. I'm not gonna rest, I'm gonna keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep going, and I'll figure these things out as we go, right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. Have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. And I came into the NBA, I was like, man, these dudes really don't work that hard. One of the things I would do is while everybody would be at the cafeteria work, you know, eating and doing all sorts of stuff, I'd just go back to the job. I'd go back to the job. <laughs> How can I show you that, no, I have the edge. Well, you do it through training, right? So when I get up in the morning, my daughter goes with me. 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. My 15-year-old goes with me. She wow. goes with me before school, and it becomes a daddy-daughter thing. That's cool. Through that process, she understands the value of hard work. And so it's through those behaviors is where I find the motivation to move it. Yeah. I think the definition of greatness is to inspire the people next to you. I think that's what greatness is or should be. It's not something that's, that, that lives and dies with one person. Yeah. It's how can you inspire a person to then in turn inspire another person that then inspires another person. And that's how you create something that I think lasts forever. It's not sit around and all, it's all happy-go-lucky right. type of thing. Your leader, your job is to get the best out of it. Got to deal with it. Face it, learn from it. It's exciting when you win, it's exciting when you lose, because the process should be exactly the same. But the hardest thing is to face that stuff. But what if today is the day that you, that's it. Now what do you do? What can I say? Mamba out. My parents were, were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity, and understanding that, okay, if you want to accomplish something, I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And uh, when you grow up as a kid thinking that the world is your oyster, all things are possible if you put in the work to do it, you, know, you grow up having that fundamental belief. Who was more influential for you, your father or mother? It, 
both were influential at different points. Yeah. Right. My uh, my mom was there on a daily basis. Uh, my father uh, was really influential at a really critical time where I, you know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And here I come playing and I don't score one point the entire summer. Not one. You didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How did you not score? Because I was terrible. Not a free throw, not a nothing. Not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it, being upset about it. My father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm gonna love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to your child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that. I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. Right. And from there, I just went to work. I just wow. I stayed with it. I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long term view became important because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year. Right. So that's when I sat down and said, OK, this is going to take some thought. All right. What do I want to work on first? All right. Shooting. All right. Let's knock this out. Let's focus on this half a year, six months. Do nothing but shoot. Right after that, all right, creating your own shot. You focus. So you start. I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old, and then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years, and I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. But well, they relied on their athleticism and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to me. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the athleticism, exactly. it's then, game then, over. Then it was game over. <laughs> wow. The love of the game, the challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's find out. And so that curiosity to see where I could push this thing led me down that path, I think. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Greatness lies ahead for this young man. Well, I learned that you have to work hard and you have to approach the game with a serious mindset. There, there was a stretch um, in 03 uh, where Shaq was out with an injury. And Phil called me up to his office and said, okay, we need you to really turn on the afterburn to start scoring wow. the ball if you have to win. So I did, and I wound up scoring, I think it was nine straight games for 40 plus points. Nine straight? Nine straight games. And then Shaq comes back second second to last game of that. And then Phil calls me to his office and says, Cole, okay, I need you to dial it back. I'm like, why? Like, we're winning. <laughs> I don't understand. It's because our goal is to win a championship. Mm -hmm. But if you continue to do this, we'll lose Shaq. We'll lose him. His motivation, his excitement. What triggers him, right? He, so I need you to pull back so we can pull Shaq forward for June. Wow. I mean, that was, that was the big challenge is you move from, you know, being the single dominant player yeah. to understanding, okay, I have to help these other guys. How do I lift everyone else up? It's tough. It's more like you, you put you put yourself to the side and you put yourself in their shoes and understand what they're feeling. And then you have to make certain decisions of, okay, what buttons do I need to push for this yeah. player to get them to the next level? So it's never, it's not sit around and all, it's all happy or lucky right. time. The leader, your job is to get the best out of them. Um, even if they may not like it at that time. He was very demanding because he expected everyone to put in the same effort as he was. And that was unrealistic. You're not behind me, you're not in front of me. You're right, right, there. You're right there parallel with me. Practice was very competitive right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. You know how Kobe is. Mm -hmm. He was jarring, we had it going sometimes. He didn't let me slip a lot. Times where I get ejected or about to get a technical foul or going off the deep end. He would be there to, you know, set me straight a lot, which helped me out a lot. So we get in the timeout, he's like, hey, hey, uh, 
hey, I'm open. I'm like, okay. And so if we go out and same thing, come, hey, 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 I'm open. Okay. You know, <laughs> come back in. Hey, dude, you got to throw me the ball. I said, man, fuck that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> I, listen, I don't, I don't deal with people that don't commit at that level, but then act as if they do. The running joke. Doesn't pass and all sort of crap. And that's okay, you know. But I'll take those five rings. I'll take five. Of them. Last of the game, the best closer, finisher, Kobe Bryant. And I believe collectively as a group, we're going to kick the competition's butt because we understand how important it is to think, execute, and dominate. Suck it up! Get tough! Suck it up! Get tough! People want to have success, people want to make a lot of money, but they want it to be easy without any challenges. Do you think it was easy for me to become one of the top 450 basketball players in the world that you never heard of? The only way I made it to the NBA is I was fundamentally sound, I was mentally tough, and I never quit. And even when I wanted to quit, I had people in my life that would make sure I didn't quit. I hired and, and sat out the top 10 motivational speakers, watched all their videos, and I watched them one by one because I understand that if I pay attention to what the best are doing, I could be the best too. I watched game film on Michael Jordan. No matter how much I watched, I couldn't do what Michael Jordan could do. I would watch Magic Johnson. I couldn't do what Magic Johnson would do. But I sat there and had these videos. I watched Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins. My hot wife was scared. I was scared. I called into my office and I said what a husband say. I said, babe, we're going to be okay. Every month the checking account is dreaming. I said, babe, we're going to be okay. Let's start a motivational speaking business. I go to Jerry Sloan and I say, Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but since we don't scrimmage, I feel like I can't show you what I can do. Go to Corral, hear me clearly. Listen to his answer, and it will unlock some mysteries as to how you become the best in the world at what you do over a long period of time. Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but I feel like I can't show you what I can do. He says, Walter, I already know what you can do, but if you want to make my team, I suggest you listen, follow directions, and execute. Listen, follow directions, and execute. What I didn't realize, even though we didn't scrimmage in practice, throughout practice, we did drills, and he created what I call habits and rituals. Every single day, practice was the same. Every single day, we drilled on fundamentals. Every single day, we worked on the habits and rituals. So even though my mind was floating, even though I was selfish and self-centered, he was conditioning me into the culture through practice of habits and rituals. The reason why I tripled my NBA income in three years is because of habits and rituals. Next year, if your name didn't get called to come across the stage, I'm here to tell you they will call your name next year if you go back home and execute habits and rituals. I wanted to scrimmage for me, but Jerry Sloan was getting me ready to play for the Utah Jazz. So every day, it was about habits and rituals. Having hot food is about habits and rituals. Great customer service is about habits and rituals. Being the best in the world at what you do, being a pro, is all about habits and rituals. Let me tell you something. I learned a very valuable lesson when I played for the Utah Jazz. I had a point guard on my team who's arguably the best point guard in the history of the NBA. His name is John Stockton. John Stockton would go to a chiropractor four times a day on game day. You know what I said to myself? I'm not doing that. It doesn't take all that. John Stockton played 19 years in the NBA. I played three. You would have thought I'd have been smart enough to watch a Hall of Famer and just shut my mouth, hop in the car, and go with them. No! 
My mind say, yeah, it doesn't take all that. And I would tease him. Man, John Stock, are you uh, OCD or something? Why are you going to a chiropractor four times a day? He swore by his chiropractor. That man played point guard in the NBA until he was 40 years old. And he didn't retire because he got slow. He retired because he refused to wear baggy shorts. He loved his Daisy Dukes. Every day on game day, that man would go to a chiropractor four times a day. And in my immature basketball mind, I would say, eh, it doesn't take all that. I don't need to do all that. I'm an award-winning motivational speaker because now I pay attention to details. Another peak performance truth. Peak performers are detail-oriented. Embrace! Being the underdog. Embrace being the individual that they say cannot do it. The underdog is a person that comes out on the playing field and says, okay, I've been in this place of pain my whole life. I've gone without for so long. This is the day you make up in your mind where I will take the throne. If you are an underdog, you got to believe against all odds. If you are an underdog, you got to learn to close your ears to everybody. You got to learn to close your ears to everything. You got to learn to block out the distractions and you got to learn to get focused, all right? The champion is the one that never lets the sun catch them sleeping. This is what life is all about. Everyone on Super Bowl Sunday. They root for the underdog because it's something about watching the little man, the small people, the people that they say are not that talented. Watching them succeed. You must wake up every morning and pull and dig every day for that one day to show up. And don't you stop pulling. Don't you stop digging until it shows up. Because they said you can't do it. They say you don't have what it takes to make the investments. They say you don't have what it takes to lose the weight. They say you don't have what it takes to hang on to your marriage. Everybody has been counting out. Everybody has been doubted. Now watch the next time you say, forget the underdog. Because that dog has more bite than that pit bull. Keep fighting. The underdog is truly the greatest. The underdog is not a person who doesn't feel pain, doubt, and fear. The underdog is a person that turns that pain, that doubt, that fear into their fuel. It ain't no shame in thinking about quitting. It ain't no shame. It ain't no shame in getting tired. It's no shame in feeling burnt out. It's no shame. But the trick is, don't just think about it. Say to yourself, I got to rethink it and get this thought out of my mind. Why? Because the shame is in quitting. So if you thought about it, it ain't nothing wrong with that boo. But whatever you do, don't let that thought, don't let that thought become a reality, all right? Everyone has been an underdog. Streams all the way back to Little League. When you were a toddler, people will look past you and believe that you didn't have what it takes. What do you want to do to prove them wrong? How are you going to go about that? See, it's beauty in the underdog. Because nobody sees you coming. You see, there's a difference between a dreamer and a chaser. Dreamers keep dreaming. Chasers get to work becoming. So are you a dreamer or a chaser? Be ready to fight. Be ready to fight for your life. Be ready to give it everything you got. Make sure what you are up against understand that you are there to do business. You are there to work hard. You are there to outwork what's against you. 
Nine times out of ten, the underdog always comes out with the win because the underdog was more hungry. The wolf that is on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf that is climbing the hill. The underdog is still trying to prove himself. The underdog is still trying to tell the world, I can do this. Whatever that dream is, whatever you have, that goal, that improbable feat, once you get it set, once you smell that, once you get a feel for it, a taste of it, and the underdog is, is an individual who, who refuses to live in the dark. I know what it's like to be an underdog. I know what it's like to be laughed at. I know what it's like to have a dream and have no one believe in you. I know what it's like to be dumped, to be written off, and to be slept on. It sucks. It hurts. It's depressing. I'm here to tell you that you need to get over it. It means nothing. It's all in your head. The 10 words that will ruin your life are what will other people think and what will other people say. Because many of us do not admit it. But when we see the underdog win, it puts belief in us. The struggle of getting people to believe that if they put you in, you won't let them down. The struggle of making people believe that you have what it takes to get the job done. But remember, they will not see you coming as you rise, as you work every single day tirelessly for what you dream of. It doesn't matter who says you're not good enough. It doesn't matter if they say you're not qualified enough. The only thing that matters is that you're willing to work your behind off to change their mind from Underdog is just a man or a woman who has made up their mind. They are no longer going to live in their setbacks. They are no longer going to live in your reality. Your reality of me says I'm not enough. Your reality of me says I can't do this. Your reality of me says you won't finish today. My reality says all I have is all I need. I'm not living in my setback any longer. I'm moving forward. I'm coming after everything you said I couldn't have. Mindset. So crucial in molding you for success. If you want it bad enough, then you're gonna sit there and build it. The path to greatness leads through having a powerful mindset. I developed a mindset in some of the darkest, loneliest nights, in some of the darkest, loneliest roads in order to gain a positive outlook on life, you have to endure pain. You have to go through hardship. You're gonna have to sacrifice. You're gonna have to sacrifice friends. You're gonna have to sacrifice families. You're gonna have to sacrifice time in order to develop the most powerful tool on this planet, the most underutilized tool on this planet, a powerful mind. Now, if you really don't want what you're asking me for, then you don't need to take the time to develop this mindset. But if you really seek out success, then you're gonna allow your growth to grow exponentially through pain, through struggle, through hardship. The time is now. There is no more time to waste. Stop sacrificing your success based off of poisonous people who tell you you can't do this, you can't do that because they're afraid. They're trying to throw their imperfections on you. You're not built that way. You are not built 
with weak values. Train like a champion. Mentality for training for gym, business, and life all intertwined. A lot of your lessons you learn can be applied broadly and resonate with different arenas of your life. Learn from anyone willing to teach. Success leaves clues. When you speak, make your words count. I can't want it for you. You have to want it for yourself. Start your day with power and know that you are enough. You are enough and you have what you need to succeed. You are enough, you're equipped for greatness. You're powerful beyond your greatest imagination. In business, sports, and life, you have to develop a championship mindset, which sets you apart from the pack. Once an obstacle confronts you, you're gonna kick it down. You're gonna overcome, you're gonna rise. You are a champion, a warrior. You must build a mindset for success that can endure pain and struggle because it will come. Your mindset will make or break you. Mindset matters. Anybody that tells you differently don't have what it takes to be great. You can develop it. You can mold it. I want you to push whether you're or you're an All-American athlete, All-State, All-World, or All-Nothing athlete. Whether you're the CEO, the CFO, or the janitor, or even jobless. Don't allow anybody to confront you with their fears. No, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. I am unstoppable. I have the mindset to succeed on the field, in the business world, in every arena of life. It's time to value your health, your passions, not your mother's, not your father's, your passions. There is nothing that can stop me. Not you, not her, not anybody. Because I am amazing. I am great. I am phenomenal. So are you. So are you.